Hello, everyone, and welcome to another exciting Circus Stream workshop and webinar. I'm super thrilled to have you all here join us today for another exciting uh, workshop here at Circus Stream. Now, before I do continue on, I want to make sure that you can all hear me and see me. So to the right there in the chat, if you can let me know that you can all hear me and see me, that would be wonderful. So I have Ju, David, Ariel, uh, Tammy, Milena, Pedro, John. People can hear me and see me. Michael, thank you for letting me know. I really appreciate it. Now, one thing I want to check out here, this will be for demand video. Ju, uh, this will eventually be on demand as well. We are recording this workshop and webinar for everyone. So, uh, you know, no worries. You will receive the material afterwards to review if by chance you have to have to hop off. Uh, but great to see you all join us. Rosa, David, Daniel, Kyle, Vanessa. Hey, hey, thank you, thank you. Now, I love to ask this on all of our workshops and webinars. I myself live in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, but I would love to hear where you're all currently tuning in from. We tend to have people joining us from all over the world. We have David, bonjour de Montréal. Welcome, David. Uh, let's see who else we have here. Uh, we've got uh, Harrisonville in the U.S., California, Texas, New York City, USA, Italy, but I am Bulgarian. Welcome, Milena. And uh, let's see, 1 a.m. here. Watch later, office in the morning. Fair Faison, thank you very much. Texas, Philadelphia. So lots of Americans, some Canadians, some abroad as well. Uh, nonetheless, great to have an international audience here with us today. Now, super excited to be going into solving XR design problems with Tvori and Shapes XR, really helping you learn the right XR design solutions to build out your project. Now, a few housekeeping items before I do continue on. As you can see to the right there, there is a chat. So feel free to chat amongst yourselves, uh, some comments if you would like. Uh, really use the chat as you wish. Now, at the bottom, the, the, the menu options have changed a little bit. So at the bottom, there should be, uh, to the left of the chat tab, there should be a questions tab. So if you have any questions, do toss them into the questions tab. This will help us organize the questions, see what has been answered, what hasn't been answered, because we will have an in-depth Q&A session at the very end of this presentation here. So again, chat, chat amongst yourselves as you'd like questions tab to the left of the chat tab just at the bottom uh questions toss your questions in there it'll help us get to them especially for the q a at the end and then there's a polls tab as well now i'm going to be tossing in polls you know throughout this webinar just to gauge the experience of the audience uh but for for instance you know i'm, I'm going to toss in a poll right now so feel free to navigate to the polls tab i'm going to publish a poll the poll is going to ask what devices do you own, if any? Not all the devices are on there, but let me know. Do you have a Quest headset? Do you have a Pico? Is it an iPhone, an Android? Magically, HoloLens. Give us a shout. Let us know what you're holding on to. A uh, couple of people have none. Oculus Quest is leading the way. Android phones, iPhones, the Oculus Go, a Pico G2. Give me a shout if you have the Pico. But uh, great, great to see that, that you're familiar with the chat tab the questions tab, and the polls tab. So without further ado, let's continue on. My name is Stefan. I lead partnerships here at Circuit Stream. I have over seven years of experience in the tech industry, working with travel IT companies, learning management system providers, ERP and business integration platforms, and now in the beautiful world of real-time 3D technology, extended reality, VR, AR, and MR. Now, a little icebreaker fact about myself, and I saw David called it out in the chat. He likes to join this a lot. I was a member of Water Polo Canada. I trained with the 2008 Beijing Olympic team. Never went to the Olympics, but a great experience nonetheless. If you've heard of Water Polo, let me know in the chat as well. It's not a popular sport. Some people have heard of it. Others haven't. But uh, always great to see when, when people are familiar with it. Now... Today, I will be joined by the Tori and Shapes XR team here to present 
alongside me is Gabriele. Gabriele is an expert in VR for design and collaboration. He is a creator, technologist, and storyteller. He's been in love with immersive tech for years and is on a mission to empower creatives and designers with the tools to build the metaverse. And with Shapes XR app, he is aiming to help like-minded professionals and creatives to push the boundaries of innovation and shape the new generation of spatial experiences. Now today, we'll also be joined by Mo or Mohamed Sayarin. Mo is a product designer focused on creating XR experiences. He's driven by his love for creativity and technology. He has worked for brands, agencies, and startups for the last 14 years, and he hopes to continue crafting beautiful problem-solving solutions and empower people through design. So it's a pleasure to have both of these join me uh, later on in this presentation here. So, uh, you know, what, what, what are we going to be covering today? So I myself will do a quick introduction, five to 10 minutes long, doubt it'll take 10 minutes. Uh, then I'll invite Mo and Gabriele onto the stage to do that deep dive into solving XR design problems. And that's going to take about 45 to 60 minutes or so. I'm going to rejoin, wrap things up with some resources if you would like for five minutes, and then we'll open it up for our in-depth Q&A session at the very end. Well, myself, Mo, and Gab will be answering questions in that questions tab. So do toss in any questions you have in the questions tab again. That is beside the chat box at the bottom. Uh, so any questions about design, the, the industry, the technology, how they got into this, Toss it in. We'd love to answer those all for you. And again, this is recorded. All of this will be recorded and sent out to you uh, to review afterwards uh, as uh, alongside any files and resources that we will be using today. So no worries at all. If you have to leave for, for dinner, for breakfast, wherever you're living in the world, you'll, you'll receive the resources later on to review. But a little bit about us here at Circus Stream. You know, for those of you who are new, who is Circus Stream? What do we do? Well, Circus Stream was founded in 2015 when we noticed the gap in XR education, helping people learn how to build the, the, these experiences themselves. Everyone was on the hype train trying to build, but we noticed that gap in helping people actually you know, learn how to do this themselves. And since 2015, we've taught over 40,000 people how to work and, and create their own VR, AR, MR experiences from scratch. Now we're a team of about you know 20 people located around the world, really a global company. Uh, we're headquartered out of Calgary, Alberta. That's where I live, the great white north, super cold nowadays. We have people and colleagues living in the US, South America, Europe, and Asia, really to help tailor to all the learners we have joining us from around the world. Now we here at Circus Stream are also uh, Unity certified experts, professionals, authorized training partners and channel partners strategically with Unity. Uh, and we've actually helped promote and create content for Unity. We've been partnered with Unity for a long time now and, uh, and, and really helping to, to you know, share our, 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 our expertise with, with folks like you all joining us today on, on the workshop. Now, Circus Stream, and, and speaking of certifications, I'm also excited to share that Circus Stream is one of the few educators in the space offering XR industry specific certifications, but I'll touch more on that later. This uh, this one here, the Certified Associate Programmer on Unity's website, we help build this alongside them uh, and really will help you prepare to, to reach those uh, certifications as well in, in, in your learning journey. Now, uh, who have we had the pleasure to teach? Well, we've had the pleasure to, to reach and teach learners from all over the world, from all walks of life, coming from various different companies. Now, with this, uh, we've had Apple, Hulu, YouTube, people from Nike, Autodesk, Boeing, the US Navy, even Hershey's, the chocolate company. Um, and, and, and this is with a, a bunch of post-secondary universities and institutions that we've had the pleasure to teach as well, and David Jumo as well. So, you know, who's actually investing and, and working with this technology? Well, uh, the industry is, is big and it's just growing. And uh, to give you an idea of who's adopting this technology, here's an overview of the industries that are currently employing XR. 
Now, organizations are adopting this tech to create efficiencies, to further innovate, and in use cases such as for military, as well as automotive manufacturing and, and construction industries as well. Now, immersive tech is helping to greatly reduce risk in these fields. And this isn't just happening in certain areas or markets around the world, but we're seeing this interest and demand grow all over the world. And what does this look like for the overall industry? Um, well, uh, some interesting facts I'd like to share from Pricewaterhouse. Uh, PwC was saying 23.5 million jobs worldwide will be using AR or VR by 2030 for training, collaboration, and to provide new digital experiences. And you know, if if, if Facebook's renaming to Meta didn't propel or excel this, I don't know what didn't, but that's just an example of how much growth we still have and how companies are investing and innovating more with this technology and reaching more people around the world. Another interesting fact is VR and AR have the potential to add 1.5 trillion to the global economy by 2030 as well. So some could say this is still the tip of the iceberg, right? Still a lot of room to grow. Uh, I've even heard some people say three trillion by 2030. So we'll we'll see where where it goes. But the industry is growing, flourishing, and uh, it's great to see people uh, like you all joining us today, learning learning more about it and and exploring the design factors as well. So for anyone interested in actually pursuing XR, if this is your first time, if you're a developer or a designer, or just interested in real-time 3D in general. I'm going to touch up on some programs that we offer and, and later on in this presentation. But briefly, we have an eight-week introduction to Unity 3D development course. This is Unity generic program, right? We're, we're covering a lot of things with the Unity engine, but really helping you learn how to use the Unity engine and what you can do with it. Then we have our XR development with Unity course. This is VR and AR development with Unity. So for the developers and engineers, we have our XR interaction design and prototyping for XR course. Both of the both the XR development and XR design are 10 weeks long, beginner friendly, but focused on AR and VR, right? So the XR design course will be user experience, storyboarding, prototyping for AR and VR. So now that you've learned a little bit about us here today, what are you all going to learn here on this workshop and webinar? Well, we'll be showing you insights and surprising takeaways from practicing XR designers. We're also going to cover how to develop an XR design process from start to finish, how to problem solve, iterate, and implement design choices on a real case study, career advice and recommendations for entering the XR market as a designer, and lastly, at the very end, our live Q&A session will, where, where we're going to answer all your questions. So if you do have questions, again, feel free to go into the questions tab, toss in your questions there, and we'll be sure to cover it at the very, very end. So let's get this show on the road. I would love to take this moment to invite Mo and Gabriele onto the stage here. Again, it's a pleasure and an honor to have both of these two from Tavori and Shapes XR join us to help you learn the right XR design solutions to build out your project. So take your time on Gabriele. Feel free to join me on stage whenever you would like. It's that little participate button at the bottom. But in the meantime, let's see what kind of questions we've had coming on. Oh, there they are, Gabriella. Here, here we are. Here we are. Welcome, welcome. Bro. Thank you. Awesome. We needed we needed that little nudge. Come on, it's the participate <laughs> button, guys. <laughs> no worries. Hey, glad you found it. I know the platform has changed a lot since the last time you've joined us. But uh, again, pleasure and an honor to have you, Gabriella, and, and you, Mo, to to join us. Um, for the audience here, you're in great hands. Uh, Gabriela and Mo are going to take, you know, 30, 45 minutes, maybe a little more to show you all, you know, of, of their expertise and how to, you know, learn the right XR design solutions to build out your projects. So with that, I'm going to step away. I'm going to hand it to you both. I'll be backstage commenting, answering questions. If you need anything, let me know. But uh, I'll, I'll be back to wrap things up and we'll do a Q&A at the very end. Thank you very much, uh, Stefan, for the introduction, uh, indeed. Of course, my pleasure. We'll, we'll see you very soon here. Thank you. Hi. 
So good, uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, Mo, do you want to say a word? So otherwise, uh... <laughs> just, just, just hi. I'm, I'm glad to be here. Thank you so much, everyone, um, to tuning in. Um, it was a nice introduction from Steph. I think that was a kind words. We're here just to share our learnings. Everyone is new in this industry. The path is just the beginning, so we share. We're going to share our learnings. Hope we could build um, something better together. Yeah, indeed. So, and uh, on that together uh, section, actually, I think it's good, as uh, as Steph said, put the thing in the questions because we will still be here and we will guide through. I've seen already some questions that we can address regarding how is Ships XR fit in the development workflow, something we will discuss right now. Uh, there is what can you do with Ships XR? Can you import into Unity? Yes, the answer is yes. We have more professional questions. Uh, how do you get your foothold in XR? I think it's a good thing for the last, but keep them going because I'll keep a look at it and then we can maybe try to shape our conversation because what are we actually going to talk about today? So today, instead of giving you some uh, theory, we wanted to give you a little bit of theory, but also show you in practice how actually we have been building our own app. So uh, the, the, the app we have built is called Shapes XR. It's right now available on the uh, Oculus Quest uh on the meta quest i should say store and in there you can uh and it's an app made for creators made very much probably like you uh that want to create ideate and prototype uh immersive content so what we wanted to do today is to guide you to one specific section of our our design and and part of the development so we will start where Mo will basically uh, guide you through what are, what are the principles, high level that we have followed. And then we will dive into how actually we design, we design our own onboarding. And that is critical because, you know, with new users and especially with an app that is rather different from their gaming applications, um, the first minutes are crucial. And if people don't get a hang of it, at least the basics, that is something that is that, that is certainly gonna gonna um, have an impact on 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 the retention of the user, on the reviews, as well as on the long term, let's say, uh, adoption. So we thought we put a lot of effort in our onboarding, and we have got something that we're gonna show how we design, how we prototype using our own app, and uh, and then show you the final result. So we can show you actually the onboarding. But of course, you guys can go on the store, get it your way, and experience it. Right. And of course, by far, we haven't got everything right. I can guarantee you that. But that's that's our best shot. And uh, there is always room for improvement. That's that, that's how uh, it is. So well, have I missed something? I don't think that's it. No. OK. So the only thing that I want to say before I hand it over to you is that for the N shapes XR, I think it might be good worth an explanation. Right. What do you think? So. Tori is the team, right? So we have been in VR for the past five years creating a VR tool for creatives and our first tool was called indeed Tori and it was a PC based uh, um, creation tool geared towards animators and, uh, and in general had very powerful animation uh, features. Uh, we have seen that a lot of the creatives, of course, found that the PC VR is still not very accessible, and that's why we put our effort instead into Shapes XR. That is instead uh, has some major differences. It runs just on an Oculus Quest. It is collaborative from the get-go, um, and it packs even more, let's say, easy-to-use tools that instead were maybe like still require a little bit of a learning curve for. for so it's something that we believe right now is just the best tool to prototype. But nonetheless, right, let's not talk about that. This is not to, to, to pitch shapes. This is to help you really uh, understand and discover how we have approached our own design, our own creation, uh, and, and, and some of the choices that we have made. So let's pick it up like that. And I might interrupt. I might ask some questions. So please feel free. Go ahead. But Mo, take it over. What was our design that we kind of like? went through and the, and, and the process that we have followed. Great, perfect. So um, as you mentioned, Shapes XR is live and it's free. So I would suggest go and get it um, on your Quest devices, no matter what Quest 1 or Quest 2, get it um, and give it a play, give it a go. As um, Gap mentioned, we're going to talk about um, the process that we took to design different um, aspect, different features, different capabilities. 
in shape six are one of the main thing or the, the the example that we're going to walk you through today is the onboarding so what you see um, on my screen is a usual kind of design process product design process that i'm sure many of you are aware of that or familiar with that you could see that across the internet defined in three steps five steps ten steps the major thing that is um similar in all these approaches is to define a problem, to um, approach that problem in a way to have multiple ideas and to test that and be iterative because no matter how effort you put in one idea, that might not be the best idea. So we took the same design process. We always start with empathizing with the actual users. Within this case, um, we realized that not having a well-established interactions and mental models around VR applications is a big pain. If you try a game and B button on your controller helps you to teleport, to move around, to navigate, it's not necessarily the same thing when you try another game or another tool. The way that you move, the way that you perceive objects, the way that you treat, the way that, the way that you hear, um, spatial sounds. So all those things lead to a problem. Another thing is, when it comes to these things, is, is about to research, not necessarily just research, just doing our best research, research or interviews with your users. It's also studying the competitors, studying all the applications, games, not necessarily VR ones, non-VR, AR, um, and um, mixed reality applications, to understand how they're tackling the same uh, problem. After that phase, when we have a clear understanding of the problem, we go for the ideation. I want to emphasize on that aspect, having a clear and shared understanding of the problem. What is sometimes missing, especially when it comes to teams, to cross-functional teams, which is um, formed with different skill set, having designers, product owners, developers, um, market researchers or UX researchers, forming a team create a really, really um, good, diverse set of people and skill set, but it makes it hard to share vocabulary and share understanding. But that's and guys, I mean, sorry, Mo, I just wanted to, this is huge. I mean, this is really huge. I mean, whenever you are designing something, try to scope it and to make it, okay, today we are solving this, okay? Are we agreeing? Are we agreeing that we are all solving this problem? That is maybe, for example, how do I grab an object? Or how do I teleport, right? Or how do I, um, I don't know, uh, um, open the main menu? Or how do I access the library of assets, right? It has to be a very scope problem where everybody agrees. Otherwise, it starts going all sorts of direction, and it's just a waste of time. True. That's true. That's exactly what we were trying to avoid with um, having everyone super close, having everyone involved from the get going, from the beginning, not exclusive, not um, keeping out of the loop developers, because that's something that would happen in many teams in many companies, but we're trying to avoid those. So when, as the first pillar, you have a clear definition of what's the problem, what you're trying to solve, which in our case was to how, how we could improve the first impression for exactly for uh, first time users, for users who haven't experienced any create, creation tool in VR or even any tool, any application in VR whatsoever. So we need something to be simple, engaging, short and educating. So we try to go and um, study other competitors that um, I'll show you a few screenshots of those. But the next step is now that you have an understanding of the problem, you try to come up with as many as possible ideas. It's really important to have as many as possible ideas, not to fall in love with one idea and try to focus on that, because that would lead to lead you and your, your team into um, sometimes a block, a, a massive wall. But if you keep your perspective broad enough at the beginning and try to have multiple ideas that would help down the road to have to pick the best one. One thing that is really important is to be as fast 
and as dirty as possible with ideation. Because if you try to make all these ideas beautiful, well executed, shiny with the, the set of color palette that your brand requires and all those requirements, it would take a huge amount of time and it would burn you and the rest of the team down. So it's really important to keep that quick and dirty and iterative. The next phase is obviously prototyping. When it comes to prototyping, doing it quick as possible um, with the least amount of resources, development resources and time, it's really important because we need to test that. Remember, we're not sure if we picked the right idea. We have multiple ideas. We have multiple solutions that we need to test with the actual user that we saw and we sense they're having an issue, they're having a pain point, they're having a problem. Sometimes after those tastes, you have to go back and redefine the problem because you might have addressed the problem in a wrong way. And the last pillar would be um, refactoring sometimes, redesigning or making sure that all the codes, all the prototypes and everything is in the right direction and launching it. But that's not the end of the journey. That's the beginning of another cycle of empathizing with people, doing your research and understanding problems. If that problem is solved, how well is that solved? Do we need to improve on that? Or is it well enough for now? Is it good enough for now to move to the next one? And if I, well, there is also one thing, there is also Johnny that says, that's what I constantly hear from top designer, keep making ideas and let them fail if it's not what's meant to be. Go back, revisit, reiterate, repeat, totally. Thanks, John, for saying that because we're not the only ones saying, but it's also more importantly is that it's very tough. And we, we heard this during other webinars that I usually do, is that when you start building something in Unity, dropping it and, and put it in the garbage, it's, ah, it's painful. So it that, is. that is one of the things that is, if, if you have something early and if you're IDA, I mean, you cannot IDA the Unity, right? I mean, it's just, it's just, it's just, just madness. You can prototype in Unity. You can certainly test in Unity by far. But, but during the, this early part, if you, you're just hurting yourself physically, mentally, probably, uh, to, to just do it. So I think that we are always ambassadors of, of using VR as a creative tool and to, to have that ideation to, that, to do that prototyping. But honestly, it doesn't matter. Just please do it for, for me. Don't go in Unity straight away. Just just use Figma, just use other sketches, use Shapes XR. I think it's a great tool for that you're gonna see. But nonetheless, don't just go into Unity because it, it's just gonna hurt your creativity and and and, uh, and it's just gonna not lead to the, the results that you or ultimately you want. Exactly. Um, um, well said, um, Gab. I think one of the main important things here, one of the things that I've learned throughout the years, is not to focus on. Um, technicality of these um, ideas and focus on how we're going to solve the problem. Not to fall in love with the solution, but being focused on the problem. And when it comes to super expensive and um, heavy approaches and pipelines like Unity or Unreal, as you said, it would be super painful to put them away. It would lead to frustration for everyone and it would burn the team down. Just to compare a few things or a few tools that you might use in the pipeline. Um, you might start um, with 2D sketches on paper, Figma, Miro, whatever tool that you, that you use. It doesn't matter. The next step, you need some sort of 3D or spatial um, environment. Why is that? Why you can't go straight away to, to development? Because there will be uh, differences when it comes to designing a product, a digital product for mobile or web platform and a digital product for spatial like VR and AR medium and, and platforms. There are specific differences that you cannot achieve, that you cannot sense, that you cannot check while you're doing any 2D design. It doesn't matter how low or high fidelity your 2D designs are, you cannot check those. Imagine a simple conversa conversation between a designer and a developer happening while both are looking at a flat monitor talking about a 3d design each of us would have our own interpretation when i say chair gap might have a, a really well designed wooden italian chair in his mind i might have a super cheap plasticky chair but both are chair so that that's really important to have a shared understanding 
and not leveraging spatial design tools and mediums would avoid that. You won't have shared understanding between team members. What you're pitching, what you're presenting, what you're delivering won't be clear enough. After that, to find to refine your designs, to do those um, optimization, those curves, those little and detailed, you might need a 3D um, design software. And at the end, um, some sort of a um, game design engine or development pipeline, whatever you're using. At the below, I, I put a few tools like Figma, Shape Textile, Blender, and Unity that we use for certain features um, at Tivori to build Shape Textile, but not necessarily for all of those features. The onboarding feature that we're going to walk through specifically today, we didn't start from 2D sketches. We jumped into Shapes XR and started everything with gray boxing or spatial sketching. As a matter of fact that we wanted to keep the, the onboarding composition quite abstract, we didn't need a refinement in a robust 3D software such as Blender. So we just exported that straight away into Unity and built that. So depending on your goal, depending on your projects, you might need a full set of softwares, toolkit, pipeline, but sometimes you could easily remove those and make yourself available and focus on just one tool or a, a portion of that journey, if that makes sense. And, and there is also another point. Sometimes you are really at a point where you're not even have to develop something, but you're just pitching an idea. So that is also another, another point. So sometimes you just don't have a project, just don't have the money, uh, and maybe there is a client coming, hey, can you build this? And what are you going to do? So, I mean, of course, you can go to Unity and build a prototype of that, but that is time consuming and, and it's expensive and you don't know if you're going to get the project. Or maybe there is someone, stakeholder within your company that say, hey, can you do something with VR? Yes, I can, but it is expensive. So there is also another important thing, and this connects also with the question that David is asking, um, are the limitation... Uh, Shapes XR and have plugins like Adobe. No, what was this? Uh, yeah, to be able to create PDFs to present to your stakeholder as part of selling your idea. Yes, totally. You can take picture of what you have created, or even you can share them a web link uh, that I, we, we can do maybe later after just to show, give an impression. And then those people can also um, look at what you have created again as a PDF and, and sell that idea and get, oh, now I get it. Now I get what you mean. Now I get the journey. Let's let's keep talking. Let's try to find money. Or yes, I want to work with you because you were the only one that in one and a half day was able to 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 show me a prototype or or at least a storyboard of how that's gonna look like. So I think that there is one side that is really the immediate development, but there is also that that pre-sale technically. But let's call it what it is. So where you don't even need to ever think about exporting because what you want is that communication power that being in a special tool actually can deliver and then exporting it as an image or as a web link, something we can show you later. Yeah, exactly. To accompany that, um, I could share a story or a journey of mine that happened before leveraging any spatial software in the design, in the process of designing for VR. Obviously, I used to use 2D tools like Figma, Adobe XD, Sketch for designs and delivering those to developers, having those conversations, sometimes even preparing documentation, like a failed attempt to try to clarify all the questions that a developer might have. They would attend to these design reviews, they will have these design handouts, and after weeks, I would receive something that, first of all, is not aligned with what I intended, and when I push forward for what I, I intended, I just realized that it's not feasible. Technically, it's not doable. And it took us almost two sprints to understand that. But with leveraging spatial design tools, such as Shapes XR, we have this quick and rapid design reviews with developers. I quickly just share a code with other developers they would jump in, we have a quick conversation, and they told me, okay, that's doable, we can do that, this is feasible, this is a line, we can do this with the scope, within the scope, or this is not feasible, this is not doable with the current technology that we have, it requires that um, workflow or pipeline or plugin and stuff like that. 
but we basically you shrink down sprints, months, weeks of um, negotiations, back and forth conversation, headaches into minutes, literally minutes. And it would help you to fail fast. And that's one of the main lessons that I've learned in, in design, to fail fast, to do my best, to put things, to arrange the things around my process and pipeline to help me fail as fast as possible. Otherwise, I would invest into ideas that might not work. My team would invest, developers would invest, and it would waste so many time and energy. It would lead to frustrations. And, and maybe, also, and maybe, guys, we want to maybe apologize. Sounds like really, oh yeah, you really need to use shapes, shapes or a you know, special tool as soon as possible. We are saying it not because we kind of like want to push, but we really believe in this like like so so much. So let's move forward because and, and let's show how what, what we have done because otherwise it sounds like we, we, it's just a pitch and that's not that's really not what it should be so more, I'll more move, I'll move forward just as a um, kind reminder I'm, I'm seeing a few questions popping up in the chat if you could um, keep your questions under the question tab it would help us to uh, moderate yeah. those and answer and make sure answering all of those questions so as i told you as a part of this uh, journey we went out and done a competitive analysis and to check how others are tackling this we had a few scenarios like um, Quill, that as soon as you join, you have a gigantic map with loads of text, loads of buttons that requires you to have a fantastic memory. I personally, I'm success memorizing these things and I cannot have my eye on this board and doing the stuff and moving. So that's what, that was one of the big no's. Maybe more, sorry, just one thing. You guys, if you find some, maybe write it in the chat, if you find any very good onboarding experience uh, in your app, so while we go through this, we will be curious to see because maybe we could copy something. <laughs> so, but, yeah. but more, please go ahead. Great. Yeah, exactly. There were other um, approaches as well, like trying to minimize what you're going to learn into just a few steps, but it will leave you in the middle of process. So you will hit a block soon. There were video playbacks that you need to watch and repeat, but it's not interactive. So you're constantly trying to pause and play, pause and play. Also, uh, 3D, but yet not interactive um, onboarding or tutorials that you see things are moving in 3D, but you don't interactive, uh, you interact with them. You just have a slide to just um, go next and previous. And one of the, the best that we, we have found was um, the, the Google Blocks, which gives you short yet engaging onboarding that walks you through the basics that you need. So we were sure that we want something engaging, short, um, interesting, yet we had a list of interactions that we needed to, to teach in order to make sure, okay, when you when you go through these um, basic learnings or, or interactive onboarding, you're good to go. You don't need any help, any extra help, and you could manage what you want to build in your mind. We went through mood boarding, how we could address that, uh, what would be the scenario, because instead of just walking through like, this is how you move objects, this is how you draw, this is how you grab, we decided to have a scenario we decided to have a bit of a narration. So we went and defined different ideas. I pitched a few ideas of like creating, putting together a spatial UI. Um, I think it was um, UGAP or uh, Victor coming up with different stage design and different narration ideas. But we ended up, we, we noticed that by, le by leading towards any of those ideas, we might kind of narrow down the perspective for our users because we want to keep shape six on as broad as possible to use this because it's really up to you to define how to use this application and what to use it for. You could come and use that for designing UI, a special UI. You could design sets, you could design um, sculptures, you could design um, industrial design that we have many examples that you could find under the gallery. We have tried many things. For example, this was one of the ideas that we tried just to give you a bit of a um, sneak peek. We had some sort of a silly idea of, uh, okay, 
we have a toaster, but this toaster design is not completed. The handle is missing the sphere. So this is how we teach you how to use basic shapes. Drag that sphere, put the, and now you could pull the handle of this toaster. But why putting toast in the toaster? Let's throw floppy disks and then rotate. And then you have those burnt to, to give it the fun. But it was quite short and we couldn't achieve that. And the thing that I've mentioned about um, doing it and failing fast, it was it was really good in this case because yes, it wasn't interactive, but with leveraging the stages capability, like a storyboard thing, we managed to test that internally and with a limited group of external users as beta testers that they went through that. We asked them, we observed them, how they feel, how they managed to go through those. Is it too short? Is it too long? And that helped a lot. Um, if you don't mind, I think we could jump in VR. I could share a bit of like sketches that we went through before hitting the final um, design. And also I could at the end um, showcase the final design. What was the result of this um, process? Absolutely, absolutely. Let's uh, let's go in. And wh what I will do is that I will also go in. So uh, Mo will share his screen. I will also be because in because this is as we said a collaborative app. Uh, so you will see me floating around via his first person perspective. So let's so let's hope that uh, the casting doesn't fail you, Mo, because I I know that you are cursed. <laughs> yeah, it is always the case of <laughs> trial, but I think I learn a tip so it oh, should, share, share it it should work now okay yes i think you are seeing my screen yeah to make it, uh, screen. Screen. yeah that's great, great. perfect oh Okay, perfect. Um, I think you now must be able to see what I see. So, um, as as I said, we started with different sketches, like um, how to welcome, where to put the welcome message, too far, too close, um, and different, and how to basically pick. The good thing, there you go. Um, the good thing about shapes XR or any spatial uh, design software is that you could easily duplicate and iterate as we we saw you could easily duplicate that and say okay if this is too let's say small let's make this that big let's move it here we don't need that border let's uh throw it away let's put it here so you see this is just a simple silly uh, example but you get what I'm trying to say. And as I said, we have this feature called um, stages. We have a row of frames that we could use as storyboarding or showing and demonstrating different stages of an idea. So as you can see, we have a notation that you could uh, help with the, deciding how to use that. We, we, had, we explored this idea of having the, the text, the copy and the steps in front of you. We also explored having the steps um, attached to your non-dominant left-hand controller, but you might be left-handed, you might be right-handed. So the first option for you is to pick uh, which one you prefer. We, we ended up having and keeping it here because it would help you to keep focus, not just changing your um, focus from your hands because you're going to deal with your controllers, then move things around and another big board. So we ended up landing on having this. Uh, at the beginning, for example, uh, before the first trial, we excluded the skip tutorial because we wanted everyone to complete the entire journey. But we realized it's not for everyone. So people might get, okay, I got it. I know how to do. Let me skip. Let me drop from the beginning. So we added that. That's the kind of thing that I mentioned about like iterating fast and understanding how we could change those things, how we could learn from um, earlier stages. Yeah, and I mean, I think it's a good point. I mean, there are a lot of tutorials where, for example, you get the uh, the screen, right, that is uh, actually in front of you. So yeah. it is already an important choice. Well, what, what am I going to do? Am I going to have it attached to my controller or is there going to be something floating around? So this, I think, it also teaches information are going to be on your left hand. Exactly. Right? So exactly. always stick with that 
that's like a convention that we decided to use. And exactly. Just, yeah. And imagine you have already a scene with um, objects, colors, and a stuff like that. The, the placement of this menu, uh, let's move it here, is really important. You see, um, you're right. With, with the with the objects that I've created, I'm masking and blocking the tutorial. Yeah. These kind of things that you never could get while using any 2D or 3D applications. Because even if you're using a 3D applications, you're constantly rotating your viewport rather than seeing it from the actual perspective, real scale. And you could say, oh, that, that won't work if I put the, um, the, the tutorials, the steps yeah. that far. We might have a glary vision. We might have blocky and, and having the, the obscure uh, vision for these, but Let's try this idea. Right. right As you right, can right. see, we're going to um, next stages, how we um, envision showing the library of objects. This is the uh, the library that we have that you could easily scroll. You could drag and drop and scale. So we wanted to teach people how to do that. Uh, I think it was the second iteration or third iteration, if I'm not mistaken, that we realized just having copy walking you through and uh, highlighting different parts of the menu and different parts of your controllers won't be enough especially for first time users so we ended up exploring different ideas and we landed on this idea of having some sort of a 3d um, tooltip so if you go I'll, I'll show you later on you get a 3d controller a mini controller doing the stuff that we require you to do and that helped a lot to understand interaction yeah. models like how, what what do we mean by grab what do we mean by hover because it's not well established as to the um area these and days maybe more, more if i can just also interrupt sorry for one second eh? sometimes it's a bit tricky uh, when when we kind of like show how we have built our own ui so maybe for anybody that is watching just for the sake of clarity everything that you see here is actually an asset right so everything that is here can be completely dismantled uh right so it, it this could be your own right i mean this could be your own ui this could be your own space and we are using this because it's something that we really use to build our own app so that's why we think this was a good example and sometimes it might be tricky when you see a controller that is moving around being the one from more with a ui that looks really similar to this this is wait, 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 what is happening so this is the mock-up so this this one that i am moving right now is the mock-up right so that is the the point so it's 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 all fake and and it's all acts as this spatial sketch that then people can refer to Right. So sorry, no, I just wanted to clarify that because sometimes people oh, are that's, that's, that's absolutely fine. That's absolutely fine. As you can see, how quick you could iterate and, and um, put things together. You don't need to be a 3D designer in order to grab something and place it here. You don't need to be a Unity developer to understand it's too far for me to reach with full hand or it's too close. Uh, I cannot reach that comfortably. You don't need to be um, an interaction designer with um, years of experience to understand moving your hands in this way for 10 times per second would tire your hands, would burn your hands down the, the gorilla hand effect that you might have um, heard in, in the conversation around VR. Those kind of things, those are the benefits of leveraging spatial design and using tools such as uh, Shapes XR, yeah. like um, these. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm freaking through um, different stages that we have for idea. You can see we have another idea over there. So we constantly jump between different ideas. We could duplicate, we could iterate on those. Oh, let's do this, let's do that. That's visible, that's not um, time sensible, and things like that. You see Gabriel on um, stage number 11 already. Um, he could uh, come and iterate. We could invite a team of designers team of developers, a cross-functional team, each of those could just start duplicating and adding their own flavor, their own solutions, and it would help a lot to ideate and share. Yeah. So for example, what I also see here, right, uh, I'm here on stage 11, and one of the thing is, uh, so there is on stage uh, 11 here, there yeah. was like a duplicating object, something that we kept, and then there was here, there is the snapping. So on stage 12, and then on stage, 15 there is the gizmo 
And I believe we have not the snapping and the gizmo included in our tutorial, despite yeah. a kind of like advanced feature. So maybe maybe you can show how snapping works, maybe just sort of so that people understand, uh, yeah. they can see your own UI. But but what, what was the reason why we kept those like powerful um, uh, things out? Yeah, true. So as I said, um, we wanted to, I mean, you've, you've worked on these features and you love these features and you know these features will be useful for, for users. But on the other hand, you don't want to make this interactive or this onboarding super long. And people could get along and could get and create scenes without using, let's say, gizmos. I could grab this and rotate it. But if I wanted to do that precisely, that's the time that I would need this well. If I want to, I could keep place that here. Right. But if I want to place that exactly on, on the surface, that's when I would right, need right. Um, um, snapping. So we decided to uh, basically divide these two, the, the old features into two categories, um, basic and advanced. And you have tutorials for those as well, but not in this line. So whenever right. you have the, the app in the lobby, you have a list of tutorials. The first one is the basic the onboarding that we're talking about. And then you have a list of um, other tutorials that you could go take your time and learn about those. Right, right. So not always, sometimes less is more. Let's see, since it's onboarding, we decided, I mean, I have to be honest, sometimes I still get questions from people. Hey, how do I do that? And it's something that people really don't see in the videos they have, don't see in the tutorials. So it feels like, yeah, maybe we should have another more advanced interactive tutorial. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, not, not, again. <laughs> exactly. So as you can see, we are exploring different ideas, how to yeah. uh, um, basically communicate the grab functionality and stuff like that. One of the major things that is always uh, tricky is your navigation, your virtual navigation in, in VR, how to do that using thumbstick, using A gestures and stuff like that, which is um, quite tricky. The wording that you use, how to visually use those, for example, in for scaling in ShapesXR, you need to hold both grip buttons and do like this. Yeah. Uh, I, I hope that I'm still in the camera frame to do this kind of movement. Yeah, do, yeah, do it slowly because it lags a bit uh, when uh, when you show it. So if you do it slowly, I think it's going to be, yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good. Okay. So it's being smaller and become bigger. Yeah, and also rotating, like having a virtual um, steel wheel and just rotating it around, those kind of things. Yeah, I think that, that was it. Um, let's go. Um, um, yeah, I'm going to jump on the actual tutorial. So uh, that's individual to me and share the, the final result with them. Yes, yes. So as I told you, uh, when you're in the lobby, lobby is actually another feature that we leveraged um, ShapesXR to build. We quickly put together some ideas. We landed on this idea. Uh, we optimized for this specific feature. We had it, we had to use another uh, 3D software like Blender. We actually used Blender to optimize the geometry because they didn't want to overload um, the lobby. The lighting, change the lighting, the final shader has been done in the Unity, and here, the lobby. So in the tutorial section, the first one, learn the basic, is the one that we went through the design process. And let's give it a go. Yeah, and there's a reminder, everybody that downloads can actually test and learn. So you can use us as research for your own onboarding and figure out what we've done right, what we've done wrong so that you can also take what you like and, and what you don't. So as part of the whole spirit that we said, do your research, use us uh, <laughs> how Great. you want. Perfect. This is the, 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 the abstract composition um, that we wanted to have. The reason why that we didn't start from a blank page is a fear of blank, leaving you in, an, in a total empty space. It's another blocker. It's a step back. But instead of that, we decided to go with a, a, a pretty minimalistic um, abstract scene that you help to recreate. So going forward, a few of those um, assets will be missed and you, your job is to uh, go through the onboarding and complete that. So I'll start that and you can see, even if I had my, my controller out of uh, view, I had this uh, vibration and halo effect pointing towards that. So I get, I understand that I need to pick my hand. You see, 
it points towards the button that I need to place. There's no way that I miss that. I open this and it's interactive and it, it walks me through the, the steps that I need to take. And this is the, the, the 3D tip that I told you. It literally points and shows me what to do. So we have visually, we have written and also interact. So I need to put it here, let's say. Let's add a cylinder as well. Oh, cube would be nice here. You see that I'm participating to, to build this um, scene. Now it's moving, so reaching and moving. Done. Let's add a bit of a color. What color? Let's go with blue. How do we pick another color? Okay, just pointing and using the trigger. Another color. Great, coloring is done. We have this super useful functionality duplication. So we see that it's easy to do. I reach out, I grab it, and it seems that I need to press this button. As you can see, I get a, a little visual feedback hinting that, yes, that's it, I got it correctly. What's the next? Select. Let's By the way, Mo, can, can you move uh, closer the 3D tip to your face and move it, turn it? Because it's, sometimes it's a bit hard to understand that. So you turn it a bit. Yeah. To, to, yes. So that is not an image. That is not a video. Yes, exactly. That is actually kind of like a 3D model that we create as part of the 3D tip to really show things. Because just to what? Okay. Maybe go forward because that there is one really interesting thing. Go ahead. There is, I think the next step is the selection. Yeah. So you can see this. Yeah quite challenging yeah people coming from design background where the actual people who struggle with this bit a lot because in 2d applications you have this so-called um, lasso tool that <laughs> you draw a line around the objects that you want to select but in spatial we want it to go through the objects yeah you, you have no that idea that how often it. Select multiple objects and people make a circle around them and they haven't yeah, selected so anything, of course. This, this gesture, yes, in order to select those. It makes yes. sense because you're coming from the same mental model. So we wanted to teach them, and this 3D um, tip helped us a lot because within yes. that, you see how you move things um, through, and through. then yeah. this is for deletion. Okay, that was one of the other things in navigation that we needed to work on. As you can see, we have a clear. Um, instruction of how to do, okay, like pulling um, an invisible string, how to rotate yourself, how to scale yourself, and done. You just learned the basic, and you could go back to the menu and start with uh, creating the space, or if someone has shared a six-digit code with you, you just enter the code, and you have that space with you yeah. this is the gallery really? can you show one last thing regarding how those tips appear even when you are in game let's say so that because that's another thing people might find it useful when they are in they might have forgotten something there is the the hint with the question mark i think it might be so because that was the onboarding but then what happened if i forgot there is still that level of information in I think that's great yeah so I'm, I'm in a normal space i'm doing my stuff uh, design something I forgot to deal to deal with a bit of UI. Let's say this one. As you can see, if I point, I could interact. But this green button, I think it's B button on my right hand controller. It turns green and it shows me that I have tutorial here. Some of the tutorials are still videos, but um, I think for this one it was 3D. Yes, as you can see, you still have this 3D that you could either rotate your hand and understand it fully spatially or rotate your head and see that from different perspectives. By the way, these examples are created by the basic shapes available in the library. Nothing has been imported. So low fidelity or mid fidelity or high fidelity, it's up to you. Even though you could, you could import your own OBJ with yeah, images. You have the import tab that you could uh, import whatever you want. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. OBJ, which is textured, and you have the full texture. Hey, I want that model. I don't have it. That's nice. This is my library, so I'll give that to you. 
<laughs> Perfect. Um, if there isn't any specific question, I think we no, can... There are, there, are, there are, I mean, to be inappropriate, but a lot of questions. So I think we should kind of like go back. <laughs> Yes. Let me stop sharing my screen. Cool. Well, gentlemen, that was amazing. And uh, that, that's what Biela just said. Uh, quite a few questions in, in the questions. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I was less politically correct. Sorry. It's but... all good. No, no worries. No worries. Well, hey, with that, I'm going to take five, five minutes. I'm going to say five minutes to wrap things up here. I'm going to share some more slides. Uh, and after the five minutes, when I do wrap things up, we'll open it up for that Q&A session. So feel free to stick around here if, if you'd like or, or to, you know, hop off, grab a drink of water, whatever you prefer. Uh, but let me just share my my slides here. And before I continue on, I'm going to toss in a poll here for all of you who are still sticking around. Um, so if you can have a get to the polls tab, that would be great. I would love to ask you all. And if you could let me know in the poll, that would be wonderful. On a scale of zero to ten. Zero being, I wouldn't tell anyone. Nope. Ten being, I would recommend this to others. How likely are you to recommend this workshop to others, this webinar to others? Zero to ten on the polls that I'm going to publish right now. Feel free to go to the polls tab. It really helps us know, you know, if we should continue holding these free workshops and webinars to others. If we should bring back Tori and Sheikh XR as well to share their design knowledge. But do let us know. It's at the polls tab. If you can go zero, you wouldn't tell anyone. Ten, you would recommend this to others. It would really help us out a lot. But with that, let me take those five minutes to quickly wrap things up here. Um, again, we here at Circus Stream are heavily focused on education. And we love the work that Tavori and, and, and the Shapes XR tool does for, for the design side of things. And if all of you or any of you are interested in kickstarting your journey in real-time 3D or XR, we'd love to have you with us and to help you learn how to use tools like Shapes XR and, and Unity and, and other tools within the Unity engine as well. And we have students you know, joining us from all walks of life and, and finding careers elsewhere. We have people joining Unity themselves, uh, Facebook or Meta now, Microsoft, Google, smaller studios like Kaleidoscope XR getting accepted into Oculus's Launchpad programs or even starting their own studios and companies. We've had people come across us from all walks of life and would love to have you all join us as well. Now, for those of you who are uh, you know, looking for something self-paced, something small to, to chew on for the moment, we do have our self-paced video course, the Intro to AR. Uh, this was just launched last week, if I'm not mistaken. It's live now in the sense that you can purchase this right after the workshop. Instead of our full eight-week and 10-week courses, this is a little bit smaller. It's a six-part recorded video course that allows you to work on things at your own pace. And the ultimate goal is to allow you to create uh, your own portfolio piece and app to, to add to your portfolio. And if you're interested, it's available for $50 for the pre-recorded sessions through our websites or links shared here in the chat from my colleague, Dayan. And a great way to get started, develop an understanding before diving into deeper development. Now, for those of you who are interested in the Unity engine, applying tools like ShapesXR or other tools out there to, to some of the Unity work, we have the introduction to Unity 3D development course. This is eight weeks long and focuses on the Unity engine in general, not specific to AR and VR. Um, eight weeks long, two classes each week, daily open office hours, really helping you create your first real-time 3D project and experience while focusing on Unity's key systems. Now our flagship XR development with Unity course. This is for those looking to understand the coding, the more technical aspects, the development side of AR and VR, really kickstarting your own VR and AR projects and apps in Unity. This is 10 weeks long, two classes a week, an hour and a half each class, daily open office hours for additional support, portfolio-based where you actually have several projects to show for by the very end. And you can opt in for weekly one-on-one -on -one mentorship and project support uh, for any specific projects that you want to build out, proof of concept for work, or, or something you potentially want to commercialize yourself. 
And if you're interested, February 15th is the next cohort there. Now, relating to this workshop and webinar, we have the interaction design and prototyping for XR course. And similarly, 10 weeks long, two classes per week, daily open office hours. But this one focuses design experiences for XR versus web and mobile apps, techniques to create XR prototypes, storyboarding, focusing on user experience, uh, portfolio pieces to be built out as well for this course. And if you're interested in learning more or, or checking it out, joining us February 7th is when we're, we're holding the next cohort here. And this is just a couple of examples of what students have kind of storyboarded for the prototypes and projects that they are working on within that design course. And, you know, that doesn't uh, come without a big community, large support. Uh, we have hundreds of people on our Slack channel that you can network with and collaborate with. Again, daily open office hours and events each week, uh, coffee hours, show and tell, demo days, game jams, local meetups. Some, some folks in New York and California have met up already and speaker events with XR companies as well. Now, if you're interested, we have our starter packs at $39.50 uh, or the plus packages. So it's the course with a four-week C-sharp program, 10 hours of one-on-one -on -one support for $49.50 as well. And these do come with payment plans and financing options. You can split it up into three months, six months, or over the year each month, 12 months if you would like. Well, there's no experience required, so beginners have no fear. We welcome everyone from all walks of life. And again, if you're interested in learning more, having a friendly discussion, feel free to reach out to our admissions team. Ro, Leanne, Tyler, Christine, or Brendan would be more than happy to speak with you, see what your interests are, how we can help, and where you can go afterwards with this. So if you're interested, check out a syllabus, download or apply now. Uh, we have some of our university partners if you're in the local areas of Toronto or Vancouver, uh, so Ontario or, or BC. Feel free to check that out. Those are for our Canadians here. We have our general Circus Stream website. And check out Shapes XR on the Oculus Store. I posted the link here. Dan, I'm sure, will be sending it in the chat again. He's going to follow up with an email afterwards. We do really, really want you to try out Shapes XR. Share it with as many people as you'd like. Um, you know, it, it's such a great tool. Super excited to have these two join us. And, and let's open it up for Q&A right now. I would love to get through some of those questions there. So I'm just going to remove this stream here. And, uh, and also, if I can say one word, I mean, of course. Really, if there was one thing that I learned is that really sometimes it's just, oh, yeah, we have a community on Slack. And then you go there. It's kind of like nothing is happening. No, man. I mean, it, it's just a lot of stuff <laughs> happening. I mean, with, with Lucy posting every Monday. Cheap and there is so much happening, actually, that, I mean, we partner up together for to have our uh, for our contest. Yes. So we uh, organized a contest and Silk Stream actually offered uh, uh, courses for the three winners. So people that were involved in that community that joined uh, with, uh, with our contest got the opportunity, of course, to get one of the design course. The final is going to be a fully in VR pitch session that will take place in uh, this Thursday at 9 p.m. So I'm going to share here the link. And if you want to see or in general uh, experience how a pitching session is going to look like. So there is a jury from uh, um, uh, composed of people from Meta, Netflix, and YouTube VR. So it's really like old star. And I think it's something that you should certainly check out. But in general, is sometimes you go somewhere, you have the impression, oh, yeah, it's no, it's really alive and it's really vibrant. And I, I really mean it. So stay involved, and I think we, I would love to answer the questions. And I think Perfect. we need to go fast because there were a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no worries. Well, we'll get through them, and we'll, we'll share the Shapes XR contest as well. Uh, Gabriella just shared it in the chat. We'll share it on Slack, so feel feel free to, to, to check it out. But let's get with the questions here. So this one comes from Vanessa, and I'm going from most upvoted at the moment here. So Vanessa's asking, uh, when you build objects in Shapes XR, can you export them as FBX files to Unity, or is it only for prototyping? Mo, you want to take this? Uh, yes. Yeah. So not necessarily FBX at this point of time. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. we can hear you. Yeah. Uh, but you can export them to Unity easily. You just need to download our Unity plugin and um, copy and paste the code that you have, as you can see easily here. So you import 
um, your creation mm -hmm. of FBX XR into Unity directly. So you don't need to export into FBX and then import to Unity. It's directly bridged into Unity. You also have the ability to export that as USDC, which I'm really a big fan of. Imagine designing your AR experiences using Shapes XR, opening that file straight away on your iPhone and seeing that in real context on your desk, on the floor. That's super um, um, accessible as well. Another thing that we have is the web panel. So you could export your stages into web panel and from web panel you could export as GLTF at the moment, but we are expanding the file formats. That's actually one area that we um, need your help. So within your pipeline, let us know which file formats are more necessary because many of the file formats are kind of a legacy and quite old dated, but it's um, really good to understand what file formats do you really need in your pipeline. I hope yeah. to answer. That helped me. And uh, I think we saw the little example. Were, were you sharing that, Gab? Yeah, I was trying. There was. Uh, l l let me try to restart it. I can show it later. Go, go to sure. the next question. No now. problem. No problem. But great question there, Vanessa. Hopefully that helps. And anyone, do let us know in the pipeline if there's anything you know they could look into that. That'd be wonderful. Uh, so this one's from Ariel. And Ariel's asking, how did you find your foothold in XR? I'm sure you answer this all the time, but I'm still curious. This, I want to take it because I think one of the things important is, uh, and it might sound weird, but it's show up. So in the sense, like show that you are involved with the community, with the creator in the space that you want to actually be active in. So if you are a developer, there are a lot of contests. So if you want to develop, actually, there are a lot of contests, uh, a lot of jams uh, and a hackathon where you can actually build your portfolio. That is great. Um, connect with the development team behind the products that you like or you love and, and start collaborating with them. Because I'm, I mean, I think almost everybody here, I mean, Mo was in one of our webinars, right? And he was just passionate about creative tools. And now oh, really? he's, he, yeah, he's with us. I mean, I was one of the first users of Twori on PC when it was four years ago. And it took a while because Pat uh, go separate and then merge together. Another example, Matt Whitby, amazing designer. He was using Gravity Sketch. Now he's a designer at Gravity Sketch. Uh, look, and it doesn't matter. Sometimes it can also be something that is not necessarily creator related, but it can be some a business position, a marketing position, a community manager position. So it, it, it's a lot of, big, of small families and I think the best important thing is build your own experience, build your own network, build your own portfolio, and just show up with the people that you like, because then you are really building something and for, for, for long term. No, that's super helpful. Thank you, Gabriela. And hopefully that helps answer your question, Ariel. Do let us know in the chat if not. Um, this one's from David. David, always great seeing you on these workshops. And we did touch up on it a little bit, but feel free to answer it briefly. David's asking, how does Shapes XR fit in a development workflow? Mo, go ahead. Sure. Um, when we define, it, it really depends on how you define um, the development workflow. The one that I have in mind as an example is you need a design tool for earlier sketches. Shapes XR is for you. You need something to check and review your designs and share spatially. Shapes XR is for you. If you have a pre-built set of assets, images, 3D objects, you need to bring those into your design tool. Yes, checked. You could easily import your assets into Shapes XR. You need just to open the, the web panel, uh, throw them away, and you have them in Shapes XR. And also, we just uh, talked about exporting directly into Unity or other file format that allows you. I think that would um, easily and efficiently sit within major pipelines and workflows um, that we have um, kind of noticed. Yeah. But there is also another point. I mean, it's also what it's also not for. <laughs> this is also another point. Because <laughs> if you want to build something interactive, if you want to move, if you're at that stage or you want to see something where, let's say, for example, lighting, shading, or, or the way the final product looks, that's not the moment. So whenever you are in, whenever you are in that early, maybe you have to pitch an idea. Maybe you have to do a, a little design I, ideation with someone. And maybe you want to create something and share it. You have some variants. It's all good. But the moment that you start to build the unity because you have a need to see how things are going to look like because you want to touch things and then it's probably not the moment 
So for anything that is early in the design process, I mean it, it's amazing. For everything that is down the pipeline, it might not be the right the right choice. And you do need to have integration with some some Unity or game engine thing, and that's why we build the plugin. But that's yeah. Perfect. No, this is super helpful. Thank you very much. Um, another question from David, but we kind of answered it. Are you able to export a scene from Shapes XR into Unity? So we did cover that. Vanessa, if you're still here, I know you said you have to leave in, in the chat here, but I'll, I'll make sure to shout this out in the recording for you when we send it over. How is this product different from other products like Multibrush on App Lab? Completely. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I know that sounds like, I mean, from so Multibrush has a free form experience, mm -hmm. right? So it, it has this fully creative flow. Uh, well, and, and you also don't have the ability to tell that story because it's something static in space, right? In Shapes XR, you do have the ability to be precise, to use Gizmo tool and to build something that is assembled as a scene and not an artwork. I mean, I think if you want to sketch something, it might be useful. And if you have, for example, gravity sketch, you might also use it in a way those could be comparable. Uh, but you miss the, the, the that storyboarding part. And also the both tilt brush and gravity sketch, they are good at building a product. They are good at building something that is in front of you. One is that shapes is good at building a scene, a whole scene that is around you. So it's more assembling spaces than creating objects. Uh, and I know it might sound hard, but the way we have built it, that's what it ended up being. Mo, is that something you, you want to add? Um, um, I agree with that. Um, I personally love Motor Brush and love the, the journey that Tilt Brush took. But um, with all due respect, if I wanted to compare a Multi Brush or Tilt Brush with something, I would say that's like hyped hybrid version of Paint, Windows Paint. It doesn't mean that you cannot do masterpieces with that, but definitely there are better tools out there for design purposes, right. for creativity, for expression. Doing I've seen like super creative dance movement being done in tilt brush and multi brush, and that's amazing. And we are not there to deliver that. Shapes XR is not for that specific area. But when it comes to spatial design and collaboration, I really want to emphasize on that collaboration is a missing piece with the current workflow within the XR industry. And we're trying to, to address that gap as well. Perfect, no, thank you, gentlemen. Super helpful as well. This one's from David. David's asking, do you use an app like Discord or Teams to communicate between all devs and designers or is that included in Shapes XR? No, we do not have, I mean, we do drop very often space codes in Slack. That happens very often. So we have a space code and we kind of like share the link uh, and uh, and yeah, so that, that's what we do. Maybe maybe that's something I can share in a way because so I was telling you about the, the space code. So you have the space code, you have this web panel, you basically copy paste the code and then you can accept the invitation and you can technically launch that specific design directly in the headset. So if you push play, not with this one, but this is one of, one of the space of the finalists, a little sneak peek. Uh, but what happens is that you can actually push and then you get it. So for communication purposes, we use a lot of this, this web panel thing because you don't need to put a headset and it's quick. Okay, which one was it? And then you're, you're going to see it. Uh, now it's loading. But that's, that's basically how we, uh, how we do it. I, we use Slack, we don't use Discord. Right. Perfect, perfect. So as that loads up, let's get on to yeah, the yeah. next one. Yep, no worries. Uh, 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 um, oh, and then this one's a follow-up question from David. What's the link you on, on the meta site that you use to share screencast? Right. Uh, so let's do one at a time. So sure. this is so this is the contest. We don't care about that anymore. And it's this. Oculus.com slash casting. You couple it to your Oculus account and then you can cast on, on the browser. Yeah. That okay. answer. Just, just, a, just a small um, trick that I learned. Never open the URL before hitting the share in your quest. So start putting, up your, putting on your quest, hit the share, hit the casting button, okay. then open the URL. That's uh -huh. the only way that I get that going. Otherwise, <laughs> you'll end up like going back and forth. Perfect. Good to know. 
But this was basically the, the, the space viewer, and, and uh, uh, Jason in this case was designing the future of media consumption in the metaverse. And you see how basically the experience flows, there is stuff happening, and you can actually move in, uh, change perspective, and see what he has created, uh, and then guide him through the whole process. And this is like his vision, something that we're going to hear during the pitch live. So this is a way in which we are actually sharing some of our work uh, easily without putting on the headset and, and just imagining certain design and, and, and concepts together. Mm -hmm. Beauty, perfect. Now, recent question here that that I wanted to touch on. This one's from CU. CU is asking, I tried the app recently. I understand there is a snap function. Is there a function to key in dimension? Oh, to key in dimension. What 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 are, well, what do you make of it? I'm not sure. I'm I'm, I'm getting the question. Yeah, let, let us know in the chat, see you, if uh, it, maybe we, we didn't understand it correctly, but uh, do let us know. I, it was a question I saw, like, like in So there is a snap function on a surface. You could you could snap there. Uh, you could scale, and you can make scale. Oh, I, I, think, I think I got it, if uh, correct me if I'm, I'm wrong. Um, apart from snapping to the surface of other objects, with, uh, we have this spatial grid as well. So you could do snapping in different um, axes in like let's say just moving it five centimeter or five meter no more or no less we have that we call that um, spatial grid if that's uh, what you're looking for yeah he was saying in the chat to type in the dimension no no typing at the moment but you you, ha you get a slider to adjust this level of snapping when it comes to the grid but you could adjust that with different um uh, let's say steps and when you set that, you get to move your objects within the steps that you've defined there. That makes sense. Perfect. Hopefully that helps you. Great question. Great question. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Ooh. Ooh la la. Uh, 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 um, what can we pull up here? So let's open this one up from uh, Danielle. Danielle's asking, what are some crossovers and differences of using Unity versus something like Google SketchUp? So we can quickly touch up on this. Um, let me just find it. Yeah, I mean, I think that if we look at Unity against SketchUp, uh, so Google SketchUp, though. So SketchUp is is the 3D modeling tool, right? You use it to to uh, to create Unity instead as all the, the that complexity about I mean not the complexity the power about uh, the, uh, the, the the coding C sharp and lighting and SketchUp is more of a for let's say architect and 3D models as I understand. So it, it feels rather simple. People use sometimes SketchUp because they are familiar with it to create a 3D model and then import it in other tools. That 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 is very common. But I, I think serve two different purposes because Unity is not really a 3D modeling tool. Uh, yeah. Well, SketchUp is to some extent, right? Right. That makes sense. Perfect. And one here from Francis. Francis is asking, piggybacking on the questions above, and the questions are out of order now. So hopefully we can figure out which questions he's piggybacking on. How do you get easy buy-in from stakeholders or leadership folks on VR projects? Based on experience, what type of proof of concepts work well with those who have zero experience with XR? I mean, you need to put them in. <laughs> Usually, <laughs> that's, that's and that's the first step. So like, you won't believe it. How many times, like, people just think it's about video games, and then they put it on and do something else with it. XR training, VR training, they're like, wow. Like, yeah. this is and amazing. you know what's happening? So I'll give you a really example. So I was talking with uh, the other day with a travel, uh, with a big travel company, right? And this is okay. We want to innovate. We want to look at the future of XR. How are you going to use it? This guy, what he's doing, he's been creating this vision. And then he's going to send a headset to his, his leadership to be there in with him so that he can explain how that is going to feel. So... I know it might be hard, but what is the best way to get leadership stakeholders in a VR project? Well, you put them in and you show them, even though it's low fidelity, because that is the point. Because you can build it and you can build something that is a mock-up that, that moves around and gives and sells that idea. And that is a it's, it's huge step forward because they're going to understand with something that is relevant, that is not video game, like Stefan said, uh, that what is what could be the potential and the other value for them. Mm -hmm. that, that is what... More well, anything to add on that? Um, I found kind of a combination of two aspects. First of all, as you mentioned, Steph, um, just asking people to give it a try. That helps a lot. 
but in terms of um, getting buy-in from stakeholders and leaderships, it's really important to try not to shoehorn XR experiences, not to try to like attach, to do everything in VR, to do everything in AR. Try to find real problems that could benefit from being solved through VR and AR. I'm, 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 I'm in love with AR and VR, but I found myself super annoying when I'm just pitching for just, just to be VR. I need to find places that are best fit for VR experiences, for AR experiences. Otherwise, there are other approaches, other mediums that could fit the purpose even better than VR. Yeah, no, I, I agree, Dan. Pick your battle. <laughs> That's it. Product demos, we, we find hard skills training is a super, you know, kind of appealing one that resonates to a lot of folks, right? Dangerous environments, airport tarmacs, you know, manufacturing chemicals, teaching people how to train on these physical environments or in a virtual world before they actually go into these dangerous environments, right? So lots of things you can do, but training, training is a big one that I feel like resonates yeah. with a lot of companies around Makes the world. Sense. Yeah. 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 Perfect. And then uh, we have one from Yelena. Yelena is asking, what would be your thoughts on using Photoshop or Illustrator 3D functions for creating XR UI? Mo, this is all yours, I think. Using Photoshop or Illustrator. Okay. So, fun fact, I started my design journey for XR from Photoshop. Oh, so really? The first software <laughs> that allows you to turn your 3D canvas into a sphere so you could draw on the vault. And then I used to transfer with so many headaches into my phone to, to attach that to Google Cardboard. So you could use Photoshop. I wouldn't recommend these days with loads of better tools out there. Um, Illustrator, as it won't allow you to export any 3D objects, I would just skip that for time being. But um, you might need some UD, some 2D um, assets and components like buttons, text panels, and stuff like that, that you could leverage using tools such as Illustrator. Although I still don't suggest Illustrator, I would suggest tools such as Figma, Adobe VAC, Sketch, or Envision. They'll, they're built uh, with the functions and tools that you need for that purpose. They're not necessarily best tools for, for doing the illustration, but it would help you with the UI design. Perfect. Thank you, Mo. Thank you. So let's do let's do four more minutes here of of, of questions. Um, I know it's quite late for for you, Gabriel, and getting there for, for yeah, with no problem. <laughs> Perfect. So this one's from David as well, and great question, I believe, around Shapes XR. Do you have a whiteboard features to take notes, or is there a better way to document comments? There should be. There should be at the reason. For that. <laughs> No, let's be honest. I mean, uh, we all know that. I mean, you can you can use that that brush tool to sketch. Right, you can right. use the text, but of course, we all know that tech, the typing in VR is a pain. Uh, we had two crazy ideas. Okay, no, the first is not that crazy. You just have voice comments and you add it there. But there was another one that actually Victor had more that I think is still brilliant and is puppeteering as a comment. So you don't just leave a comment; you also record the movement of the person that is leaving the comment. Mm. And then I think it's huge because if you have that sort of animation recorded, you will. Can you imagine how much more communicative power you could get out of it? Right. So I think this is brilliant. I don't know when or if, <laughs> but I think it's a brilliant idea to add a comment because you will have a ghost of your colleague that can give you and can tell you how certain things are going to work. I think it's huge right now. The reason, but we are planning to simplify that maybe with voice and then with something more sci-fi right definitely perfect and i see fiona has to head out here fiona thank you for joining us dan thank poltergeist you, xr trademarked <laughs> i love it no and, and thank you gabriel and mofor for the insights there um this one's from leila and leila's asking what research methods beyond interviews do you find most useful in understanding the specific challenges and context of xr all right um, I must say observation and the fact that in Shapes XR we get to go within the same space and observing how people are trying to grab things, for instance, is the most valuable, at least from my perspective, um, method of uh, research that we've done. Because 
it's it's a bit hard, especially when it comes to Excel and with the pandemic of not having uh, to get people to to please into a lab to observe their physical activity. But at least with tools such as Chef's Excel, you get to watch them how they're reacting, how they're moving things around, how they're navigating. So I think that's the um, kind of the best that we've got. Yeah. And, and there is also, this is, I think it's very important because for design is so important. So there is another thing. Uh, of course, this is only possible if you have a multiplayer app. So you can, of course, organize a gallery in VR and you see how people are doing it. One thing we have done also is that we have given tasks, and this was tricky, but it was still valuable early. So we asked people to record themselves performing a series of tasks, and we asked them to send us the video. So, and usually talk over it. That was very valuable. Another thing is that, for example, now we got the contest, we got loads of, 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 of spaces created by people, and we see clearly there are some things that are not clear. Everybody's using a feature in a way, viewpoints in a certain way, everybody's scaling things differently. There are certainly some recurrent issue. Uh, that we, so it's just observing and doesn't have to be necessarily live. Sometimes you can extrapolate what people have done just by looking at what's the outcome and then come up with guesses of why that was the case because live it's not always the case. Maybe you don't have multiplayer and so on. So it's, it could be other ways. Right. Perfect. No, that makes sense. Thank you. Thank you. And let's do this last question. Mo, I don't know if you're typing it out, but this one's from David. Uh, and David's asking, the models you import, can they have animations on them as well in, in Shapes XR? Not yet. And um, the reason why is we are trying to give you, to provide you a really good experience, not laggy. So with the current possibilities and power of the headsets, it could be quite tricky when you start um, bringing animated models, joint model, rig models within this. We have that with Tivori, so because it's PC VR, you right. have the, the, uh, the luxury. You can still not import animated model, eh? you can export, import rig models, but not yeah. the animation that come with it if you have. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Perfect, great question, David. Lots of great questions today, but with that, we'll wrap it up here. Uh, Gabriele, Mo, thank you so much for your time here today. It really thank means a lot. Us. Of course. And to the audience that's still here with us, thank you all for joining us again. None of these webinars or workshops um, you know, would, would be possible without, without all of you attending and all the questions asking and interactivity. Thank you all for joining us. Day on backstage. Thank you for the support as well. Uh, and again, Gabriele, Mo, I, I can't express my gratitude enough. Thanks, Thanks. and we are going to return the favor. You're going to be with us doing the That's contest, it. right? <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> Lovely. Looking forward to see you. And look, uh, everybody, have fun. Start creating. No matter the tool you pick, just join. Just join this now. Just join this now because it's happening. It's happening. And uh, Circus Stream is a great way. It's a great platform to start with. Uh, and uh, let's let's make this happen. Let's do it. Thank you again, everyone. Mo, Gab, thank you as well. Have a wonderful oh, well. evening. Everyone, have a great day, night, morning, wherever you are in the world. And uh, we will see you all again very soon. Take care, everyone. Thanks again, Bye -bye, Gab. Guys. Thanks thank again, you. Mo. Bye. Goodbye.